You're listening to the Fitness Matters Podcast with Paula B., and this is episode number 65, Bad Day. Well, hello, hello, my friends. How are you today? I am having a bad day. I mean, you might have guessed that from the title of the podcast, or maybe not. Maybe you thought we were just going to talk about a bad day, and we are. We absolutely are. But I will tell you, I'm still in the middle of it. I'm still in the middle of having a bad day. And it's really, it's kind of a fascinating thing to have a bad day when you are a person who talks about mental health and managing your mind and mindset stuff where I think, I think the general consensus is that when you manage your mind and when you get all this stuff figured out that you're never going to have a bad day again, right? I mean, does it surprise you to learn that I have a bad day? Well, I will tell you something. Managing your mind does not actually cure you of having bad days, and it's why I really wanted to talk about this today. I thought that that this might be interesting for you to hear what it's like in the middle of my mind while I am managing my bad day. Now, here's the thing. I could tell you all about like all of the reasons why it's a bad day, but I also know that you know, because I know, and I've told you that the reason we have a bad day is because we are having bad day thoughts. A bad feeling is just that. It's a feeling. It's a feeling like every other feeling that we have, and it comes from your thoughts. So even though there are things happening that are outside of my control that I could absolutely regale you with stories about and tell you all about all of the details, I know, and I'm even in the middle of thinking the thoughts, and I know that they are just thoughts, that I am having bad day thoughts. Things like, I'm just so tired. I feel exhausted. This is frustrating. Nothing is going my way today. I just can't get anything done. This and many others. I will share other thoughts with you too. But these are the kinds of thoughts that I am having today. And it's very interesting having these thoughts and hearing them as thoughts, knowing that they are thoughts, and not making myself, I guess is the word I'm going to use, making myself manage these thoughts. It's been really interesting today to listen to my thoughts and notice what they are creating for me. So here's here's what happened. Let me tell you one thing that happened today, just because I want to clarify for you the chain of events of the thing that happened, the thought I had about it, the feeling that that thought created, all of the actions that came from that feeling, and then the results that I got in my life. So what happened was, I woke up this morning, as I do, <laughs> and I got out to the garage to go hop on the treadmill. And for a variety of reasons, the treadmill was not available and and couldn't be like made available. There was a lot of stuff on it. None of it was mine. I, it was, it was something that I couldn't do anything about. And my thought was, ah, I can't start my day the way I wanted to. I can't get anything done right now. And I was very angry. So let me, let me clarify what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm walking through the process that I tell you guys about, that there is a circumstance. And this, by the way, I, I know I've given it credit before, and so let me give it credit again. This It's called a, a model, the thought model, from Brooke Castillo, which is the life coach school, which is you know where I'm getting currently getting certified as a life coach. So, so this, is, this is how a model works. You start with a circumstance, which is completely factual. And honestly... <laughs> I'm thinking about it now. When I'm saying the treadmill wasn't available, that's not entirely factual. It's close, but it still has that layer of opinion. I'm I'm gonna think about how to how to say that in a way that does not contain my opinion. I'm not gonna spend time on it right this second. I'm just gonna tell you that even even my circumstance, which is supposed to be completely factual, isn't maybe completely factual. Anyways. My thought is the next thing that comes. So there's circumstances, then there's thoughts. And my thought was, I can't get anything done. My feeling about that was angry. 
And then the actions that I took from that feeling of anger, and there were other actions and other thoughts and other feelings that also concurrently were going on. Some of them were related to the treadmill. Some of them were related to other things. But the point of doing a thought model like this is to pinpoint simply one thought at a time. Most of us have lots of thoughts about a situation. In fact, I did have lots of thoughts about even just really specifically the treadmill that that resulted in different nuances of different feelings and different actions. And so what I'm showing you is just one tiny slice of what happened. And that really is the point of doing a thought model is to find one slice and understand just how impactful every single thought we have can be in your life. So this one thought, I can't get anything done, made me feel angry. And then from that feeling of anger, my actions We're all in the neighborhood of avoidance. I started playing on my phone. I came in the house and I sat down on the chair, Blossom's chair, (laughs) if you watch my workout videos. And I, I sat down and I just pulled out my phone and started playing a game and then continued to play the game for a very long time. And I didn't get to work like I ordinarily would. I didn't hop in the shower like I ordinary w- ordinarily would. I didn't do any other kind of workout. I didn't even try to come up with some other iteration of going for a walk or doing some kind of exercise. I kept thinking over and over about how frustrated I was, which is kind of funny that when I was thinking about it, I was thinking that I was frustrated, but my actual feeling was anger. And that's not, it's just to the aside. It's not super important. It's just something I notice that sometimes the words that we say in our, our thoughts don't exactly line up with the feelings. When I think to myself, this is frustrating, what I often feel actually instead of frustration is anger. And it's very interesting. Anyways, that was there really was a digression. But so I was thinking about being frustrated. I was thinking about the treadmill. I kept going around and around in this thought loop and avoiding doing anything that would get me unstuck. And so the result that this created is that I didn't get anything done. I mean, I was thinking I can't get anything done and it created for me this result of getting nothing done. And it was really interesting to me that even even though I understood on some level while I was going around and around and playing on my phone and kind of thinking about my frustration, which is what I thought it was, I was really unwilling to to do this model. I was really unwilling to write this down on paper and see what it was creating for me, which is, by the way my wholehearted recommendation for you when you have a thought or a feeling or an action that you're not super excited about, get it down on paper so that you can see what it's creating for you. Because until I wrote these things down, until I actually sat down and thought about, you know, what was it that made me have this thought about, I can't get anything done. And then what did that create for me as far as a feeling I really thought that I was just frustrated. And I thought that that frustration was simply a fact. When I was telling myself, I'm just so exhausted today and this is frustrating and nothing is going my way, I truly believed it in the moment. I really did. I understood on some level, because this is what I am training for, I understood that it was related to my thoughts, but I was unwilling to sit down and do this work. That was, that was part of the actions that I was doing was that I was unwilling to help myself. And I will tell you, but wait, that's not all. (laughs) I feel like an infomercial here. (laughs) There's more. I also started judging myself. Now this does still fall under the, the actions that I was doing from this feeling of, of anger. When I was avoiding feeling angry, 
I started judging myself and I started telling myself, I can't believe that you're wasting your time like this. You're not getting anything done. You're so lazy. Just get up and get something done. What is the problem with you? Which by the way, is a terrible question to ask. We, we've talked about this at least tangentially before. I'm not sure exactly what episode I can point you to. In fact, in fact, I might even just make an entire episode, and this is going on the idea list, about terrible questions to ask yourself. <laughs> because when you ask yourself, what is wrong with me? Your brain, my brain, had quite a few answers that were not helpful at all. When your brain is looking for something to be wrong with you, it can absolutely find something wrong with you. And then I started thinking things like, you should be managing your mind, but you're not. You are such a fraud. You can't even help yourself. How do you think you can help other people? That thought right there, that was the one that I finally heard that I was like, wait, what? (laughs) Like, what am I telling myself? Because here's the thing that's really interesting. A lot of this chatter, it was kind of going on in the back of my mind. As I mentioned, I was playing on my phone. So I was playing on my phone. I was looking at YouTube. I was, I, I was reading comments. I was on Facebook. I was actually even going through some of the motions of my day. I was getting some work done. I was doing worky kinds of things, but not, not in the level of production that I have really grown accustomed to. So I was doing things while the chatter was going on. And therefore I wasn't really tuned in to all of the chatter. I knew that I felt very frustrated. Again, (laughs) I felt frustrated. I felt edgy, that, that little bit of that tingle of, I'm not quite right, but I'm also not, you know, not quite wrong either. I was, like I said, I was going through the motions and getting some things done, but that thought, the how, how do you think you can help other people if you can't even help yourself? That one I heard, honestly, because it was a relatively new thought. That one does not have the automaticity of it as things like, I can't believe you're wasting your time. You're still getting nothing done. Just get up. What's wrong with you? Those kinds of thoughts I've had so many times that I didn't really hear them. But when I heard that new thought, it actually kind of woke me up from my stupor. And I was like, wait a second what is going on here? What am I doing? And how can I make this help somebody else? Hence the idea of the podcast was born. (laughs) Truly, I had a whole nother topic. Today was already going to be podcast recording day and I had a whole nother topic ready to go. You'll hear it again soon or you'll hear of it soon. But this thought, how can you help other people if you can't even help yourself? woke me up to what I was actually doing. I not only started off with a feeling of anger that I was avoiding feeling, but then I was heaping a whole layer of judgment on top of it. And when I heard that particular judgmental thought, I started tuning in and I started really listening to my thoughts. And I realized just how much of what I was thinking wasn't about the original thing that was making me, I thought, frustrated that was actually making me angry. It was much more about the judgment. The thing that was giving me a bad day wasn't the treadmill. The treadmill at most probably gave me five minutes. At most, it would have given me five minutes if I would have dealt with it in the moment. But instead of dealing with it in the moment, I allowed myself to not feel the feeling and simply do all the actions that that avoidance of the feeling brought to me. By not managing my mind and not paying attention to what I was thinking, I was simply acting from that emotion of what I now recognize as anger. I was avoiding feeling angry because frankly, I don't like to feel angry. It's not my favorite. It's an emotion that I haven't spent a lot of time processing just yet. I don't have as much practice processing anger as I do other feelings. So when I didn't notice the anger because I thought it was frustration, I was acting from the anger meaning that I was trying to avoid it. And then 
because I was avoiding my anger, I was judging myself too. And as soon as I recognized this chain of events that at this point had been going on for hours, I mean, hours, my friend, (laughs) it had been going on since I got up this morning and it is, well, it is 10 hours later. Waking up to the chain of events that was making the whole day bad rather than having one bad incident in what could have otherwise been a a perfectly lovely or at least ordinary day really got me to thinking about why we have a bad day. We don't have a bad day because something bad happens. I, as I've just spent the last however long telling you, I had a bad day because I didn't process that original thing. And this, here we go. I've got some actual advice for you this time. I want you to recognize that a bad day is actually a perpetuation of a bad incident, which, I mean, if if you've heard me talk about a circumstance, it's not really a bad circumstance. That's an opinion of something that happens something happens, we have a feeling about that thing, and then some of us, me, I'm raising my hand, try to avoid feeling that feeling. And then, and then because we're avoiding feeling that feeling, we start judging ourselves for it. It's a fascinating chain of bad day events. And the thing that really happened here, I mean, part of part of what happened is that because I was still sitting in that rumination and avoidance, other things happened that I also thought were very frustrating because I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing and therefore other frustrating events felt frustrating. I was actually angry about them too. Let's be honest. I was actually angry about three or four things that happened today and I didn't want to feel angry about any of them. And then I was judging myself about avoiding feeling angry. So here's my practical solution. Finally, I know I came back around to it. (laughs) I had practical advice and then I got talking about theory again. Here's my practical advice. My friends, stop judging yourself. Stop judging yourself and feel your feelings. Now here's how this plays out in real life. This is going to sound hilarious to you because this sounded hilarious to me. And then I actually did it. I stopped when I realized what was going on and I sat down and felt angry. I thought about the treadmill and I let myself actually feel angry about the treadmill rather than the frustrated I allowed myself that really uncomfortable moment of being angry. And I'm actually going to go so far as to say that I forced myself to feel angry because I didn't want to. I mean, as, as I've told you throughout this podcast, I didn't want to feel angry. But when I forced myself slash allowed myself to just sit in the anger for a moment, something happened that was beyond my control, that was not what I expected. Those actually, frankly, are the facts. The treadmill was beyond my control and not what I expected. And I was angry about that because I had a thought that I couldn't get it done. Not because of the treadmill. Again, not because of the treadmill, not because of the thing that happened. My thought created my anger. And here's the thing that I was thinking about this. I could have very simply gone in and noticed that thought, I can't get anything done, and really managed my mind and thought another thought. I could absolutely think lots of other things about the treadmill. I could absolutely think lots of other things about any of the other incidences that happened today. I could actually have gone in and thought other thoughts about my avoidance of anger. I could think other things that weren't judgmental of myself. I could do all of those things. But what I chose to do was simply feel them. 
allowing myself slash making myself feel the anger rather than talking myself out of the bad day, talking myself out of the anger, managing my mind out of the anger, I allowed myself to feel it. It was kind of mind-blowing, I'll be honest with you, because so far I I do feel like I spend a lot of time thinking about ways to feel better. And that means that I do pretty frequently brainstorm happier thoughts, for lack of a better way of putting it. I do pretty frequently notice the thought and then try to dissipate the thought, try to work with the thought, ask myself questions about the thought, get to the bottom of it. I mean, I've certainly given you this advice before. When you get to the bottom of a thought, sometimes you can wriggle it up and get underneath it. I certainly could have questioned the logic of my thought, I can't get anything done. Clearly that's illogical. And yet, today, my tactic was very different. I allowed myself, again, slash made myself, feel the anger that that brought up for me. And you know what it resulted in? Feeling better. (laughs) It's kind of amazing, my friends. Rather than trying to change my thought, trying to find some silver lining or manage my way through feeling better, allowing myself to be angry and allowing myself to notice that I was judging myself absolutely turned around my thoughts about the day and my feelings about the day because I managed my thoughts. But I managed them in such a different way. And that's why I have this advice for you today. Because sometimes I think... I do think that lots of us feel that managing our thoughts means replacing them. But here's the thing. I don't mind that I think I can't get anything done. It's a thought. It's a thought like every other thought. And that thought created for me a feeling of anger that really taught me a lesson today. I don't enjoy feeling anger. And it was very easy for me to avoid feeling anger and then judge myself for that. But when I allowed myself to just feel it, it felt, I'm going to say it, good. It felt different than feelings that I've had before. It was a very almost novel experience to allow myself to feel angry. I suspect that there is a feeling that you don't like feeling. I don't know which one it is. For some of us, it's anger. For some of us, it's sadness. For some of us, weirdly, it's even something like excitement or hope or joy, something that we're not used to or something that maybe we associate with a negative experience or something that happened a long time ago for lots of us. And I'm going to encourage you, rather than changing out the thoughts, rather than finding a new thought, Allow yourself to think the thought that brings up an emotion that you don't want to feel and allow yourself slash make yourself feel that feeling anyway. We are given, for lack of a better word, and you can absolutely take that in whatever way fits with your personal philosophy. We are given emotions so that we can experience them. When we think that we would rather not feel them, we are actually denying ourselves part of the full breadth and depth of being human. There are emotions that can feel uncomfortable, that we would rather avoid, that we spend hours doing anything but feeling them and then judging ourselves for avoiding them. But when you allow yourself slash make yourself feel. You'll notice how alive you are. You'll notice how deep your feelings are. You'll notice how human you are. And that's really beautiful. 
it's really enlightening and opening and loving to yourself to feel your feelings. Even the ones that seem like they're going to be icky, even the ones that seem really, really, really like we would rather not feel them. They're feelings, just like the ones that you like. There was nothing about feeling angry. Honestly, I mean, almost nothing, literally, that felt different about being angry than I feel about being excited or happy or nervous or, or all kinds of other feelings. I got a little bit sweaty. My heart started pounding. My thoughts started racing a little bit. And then after a while, it dissipated. Your feelings have physical sensations that we might have associations with maybe panicking or maybe a time when we were upset. That, that heart-pounding feeling can have lots of different associations for us. But when you can notice that your heart is pounding, notice that your hands are clammy, notice that you are sweating, notice that your, your throat feels like it's constricting, notice that your body is reacting It creates a mind-body connection that I find to be incredibly valuable. If you listen, or excuse me, if you watch and hopefully even follow along (laughs) with my workout videos, you know that I talk all the time about the mind-body connection and about how when we do certain exercises, how you want to notice where where your foot is or where your balance is or pulling in your core, things like that. Your emotions are part of that too. Letting yourself slash making yourself feel uncomfortable emotions is actually, I mean, metaphorically and actually a lot like finding your balance. You have to practice it and it's really good for you. It's going to keep you on your feet mentally and emotionally for years to come. You guys, I think I'm going to leave it there for right now. I really do encourage you to feel your feelings and notice them in your body. Notice them as part of your body. Notice them as part of your experience, part of your life, part of who you are as a human being. I really hope that this one was helpful for you today, like always. And if you feel like sharing, you know I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you again soon. So are you totally loving this mindset work and you really want to do it like, you know, every day in order to get your goal? Then my friend, you need to join the Get Your Goal group. It is my personal and private, very interactive coaching and accountability group where every day we talk about your mindset and we get your goal. You can learn all about it at paulabfitness.com slash get dash your dash goal. I'll see you in the goal group.